so I was at ICAST recently and spent a little bit of time walking the show. Didn't stay at the Torquedo booth the whole time, which was nice. Had my had my anglers there, Team Torquedo, to work some of it so I could go out and see what was new in the industry. And I stopped by the Do It Molds booth, which was right next to the Victory Hooks booth. And I've been tying, they gave me this hat. It's a cool hat, right? Um, I've been tying the finesse jig on the Victory Hook that's made for this one, the Weedless Midwest Finesse. It's the, it's the Ned Head. And I've modified it. I got that video and you know, that's, it's been, honestly, this Finesse jig in, in the, uh, the Bat Wings by Z-Man has, has really, you know, when I'm somewhere and I have to catch a fish, they always eat that and I'm happy with it obviously I mean I have a box dedicated to just that finesse jig and and I do keep a couple that are you know without without the skirt but I was happy to um, you know to be at the victory victory hooks booth talked with those guys a little bit and they have that hook in bigger sizes because so I, they gave me some they gave me some of the hooks so I forget what size this is but it's it's the only one that, that fits that mold but they got a new mold it's the Magnum version okay so Magnum meaning what do you have here 5 8 is the heaviest but it goes down to 3 16th. So, you know, it's just a heavier, heavier version of the original. And I'm gonna take this heavier version and do the same modification. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Dremel out somewhere for a collar. I got less room to do it with, so it's, it's gonna be tricky, but I think I can, I can get that done. But I wanna show you, you know, I, I think with a lot of different, different technology, different products. You have products that kind of get reinvented over and over and over again. And then there are products that actually um, they're just better than what's come along before them. In and, and this hook is one of them. You know, it's it's designed for for that head. And this is the biggest one. This is the four odd. You know, with this, this is so automatic for me. So just, they eat it, and I've got them. It, it hooks fish that I don't deserve to catch if I don't feel it, but I still catch them because just the angle of the, the hook and how this, you know, how the bend is, you know, I'm excited to, to use these 4-aught, 3-aught, 2-aught, and especially the one odd because I've only been able to use the smaller soft plastics in this this smaller gap. So um, I, I've I've wanted to put and I've done it here and there, but with with bigger soft plastics like the Z-Man Palmetto Bugs, this is one of my favorite trailers for a jig. But it's even with a Laztec, it's a little bit too much plastic for the gap. I don't think so with this. I'm, I'm gonna do this before I even pour, pour some lead on these hooks. And we're just gonna look at that gap. So it's gonna come to about there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna pour these up and send that down in, in places that, uh, <clears throat> I might do some tidal largemouth and snakehead fishing. I don't think this hook would stand up to a snakehead. Hello? This hook did catch my personal best eight pound one ounce largemouth down in South Carolina this spring. So who knows? All right, let's start, um, let's start modifying this brand new 
lead, lead has never touched it mold and um, see what we see what we come up with I don't think they'll be finesse jigs I just think they'll be regular full bodied full skirted jigs with like excellent hookup percentage you know it, it, and the hookup percentage is part of it it's it's you you get them even though you might not have felt the bite the other part of it is once you do hook one they stay buttoned like i i don't think i i think i caught 100 fish on that style hook before i actually had one jump off and lose it it's that good a hook all right let's go find the dremel oh and just in case you're wondering this is the original mold that is the one aught i closed it it did close this is the two aught uh, it's it looks like honestly I would have to to modify I'd have to run a Dremel to open up that eyelet area this little little cavity where the eyelet is supposed to go I'd have to move it a little bit in to the left so yeah, I think you can modify it and get the two out in there I'm assuming the same thing for the, the three and the four so the newer hook sizes um, you you should be able to get them in this with some modification. The one knot fits as is. If you follow the channel, you know how much I travel. And I gotta say, it's good to be home. Allows me to do projects like this. I totally got sidetracked on two other projects, things that I thought of. Yeah, I need to do that and, you know, modifications to the kayak, changing uh, how I lift the motor, changing the handle up front, changing the, the way the throttle's mounted and just re-rigging stuff. Um, when I'm home, I have time to tinker on things like this and kayak rigging which is good just good to be home so let's take a close look um i don't have a whole lot of room here but i'm using this let me see if you can see that at ball mill to just freehand grind a collar into either side of where where the hook goes and i might want to broaden you know, widen out where the hook goes to allow the, the lead to pour in there. It's If I'm going to create a collar, there's not a whole lot of room there to do it. I'm probably going to have more success on, on this side because I got more room. But I think I'll start there and then work my way to the heavier ones where it's a little bit more difficult. Here goes, just freehanding. Okay, so what's important here, knock the dust out of there. Let me turn this around so it looks right. And I'm gonna point with this other cone-shaped bit, but what is important is that you preserve a narrow little area here so you're not dribbling out the bottom. That hook's gonna lay in there and let's see if I can find one. Put this two out on there and see what it looks like. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to create a mold in which you've, you've opened it up to the point where it just blows out and dribbles and then you got to clean up, you know, down the, the shank of the hook. But I was able to, to on, really on both sides, scour out you know, scoop out, grind out a spot that's going to create a lead pocket that's enough that I can tie my my skirt on there. And, you know, you, you can't put anything back. You know, once you've ground it, you can't really... <laughs> you, you, you can't add it back in. So, 
you go a little bit at a time. I went pretty aggressively with that one because I've, I've done now an entire mold before, but I'm going to continue with this and um, just going easy as we get to those bigger head sizes, but I'll get that done and uh, we'll fire up the lead pot, pour some jig heads and see, uh, see how this looks. I think that, I think that half ounce size is going to be good for some of our deeper reservoirs here in Maryland. Summertime, I have to get back out there with Matt Elliott. So I know he'll say at that point about that angle, go. There's three of them and he's right. This just helps it release. If you can smoke up a new mold, get some of that wax kind of burnt and charred on there. Just helps with the release of each each jig head as you pour them. So I have a very old RCBS Pro Melt that I've run I don't know how many tens of thousands of of jig heads out of here. So I'm heating up. It's a crappy spinner bait wire. Just a very fine wire that I get some wax on there just wiping it on the uh, on the wax on the candle and that helps flux it so it's pouring real good I already have let's see I think I grabbed the 2 out and I put that in the what's the smallest one 5 sixteenths maybe we'll go ahead and uh, get a good stream coming out there Still not pouring real good, but there's the first one. Let me grab my pliers and uh, we'll take a look. So, got the collar poured. I'll trim off the sprue a little bit later, but I'm gonna blow through the, the 10 or so two aughts in that size. Get some heavier ones going. Maybe put the one outs in the uh, in the original. See what that does. All right, I've got a bunch of them poured up and uh, trimmed the uh, the sprue off. And uh, right now, got the heat gun going. And then looks like I can't even tell what color I got in there, but I'll find out when I pull it out here in a second. Yep, looks like I got black. So I'll do I'll do some of these in black, and uh, I'll do some in green. Then we'll uh, be able to tie a little little bit up tomorrow morning. All right, I grabbed the uh, the heads that I poured and painted last night, and here's here's what we got. Um, these are the heaviest ones. I forget what size. So these are the half ounces that I did. Um, these I really. I look at these and I think that's way heavier than I would use on a river, but the application that I can see these being very useful is up on Lake Erie. When you're on the deck of a bass boat or a kayak and stuff's getting really rough out there and you just want to keep this plastered to the bottom and let your let your rod tip kind of absorb and, and stay connected to the bottom. When you have half an ounce on a on a Ned head, or in this case, it's going to be a finesse jig, like the ones I've done before. You know, that, that's where you need that weight. Maybe on some of our Maryland reservoirs, uh, fishing really deep. Um, I poured some in the, the smallest size on the Magnum. Um, I don't know. I, it, maybe I would use these in the river when it's really flowing good. We'll see. But that, the, the, the thing I'm most excited about is the biggest, you know, the bigger size hooks so I can get, you know, baits like the palmetto bugs in there and not really choke up that hook point, you know, or that, that hook gap compared to the original, which I did like, I did four of these here. 
let's just take a look at that. That compared to that, you know, and and this is perfect for the bat wings, right? But I don't throw palmetto bugs much for for smallmouth. I think a smallmouth would eat it, but that's a largemouth bait to me, and that's a hook gap that can take a largemouth size Z-Man soft plastic. So how I'm tying these, I get two basic colors. Uh, this is just a flat black, and sometimes they do black with a blue flake. This one actually had like some ridges on it, which gives it a an interesting action, and you put scents on there and it holds it better. I always mix in some round rubber, and I'll I'll separate these out, and uh, you know put varying amounts of you know the regular silicone tabs and the round rubber. Uh, here I got the what do they call it like barbed wire. Uh, watermelon or green pumpkin so it's green pumpkin with black kind of bands running through it and then I'll mix in this this brown round rubber and uh, that's what you end up with so you know got my bobbin to tie um, I got some head cement but like man I go through these these applicator bottles like I destroy them all you know I'll, I'll tie some and then come back to it and it's all clogged up and Wish I had a better way of doing that. Um, these are shot. These two are, are done. And uh, I'm just going to open this jar. Maybe dip the applicator in there to get that, that head cement on there to, um, to really, you know, lock in the threads that I'll, I'll tie here in a minute. So I'll, uh, I'll tap one of each, show you what they look like. And then uh, hopefully soon I'll get these out on the water with the palmetto bugs give them a shot so start by just and you know we did get let me get a light background you can see I'm gonna use my face all right you can see that collar in there that's the part that are modified to to be able to just start the wraps on this uh, this thread people ask detailed things in the in the comment section 210 denier. I don't know. I've used size D thread before. This is not it. This is something a little bit lighter. Um, when I when I tie with bucktail, I absolutely have to go up to size D and really get it, really get it going. So, all right. Um, I'm gonna end with a round rubber. I will start with the silicone. And I get the the tab. I ended up cutting the end of this off, which will free all of the tentacles to freely float. And for a finesse jig type look, I'll put a little bit, I don't know, I'll put maybe an inch on this side. And then I just, see we get that long end. I'll loop it around. And whatever side I haven't gotten on the back, I just loop that around. And uh, here come the comments. What are they going to say? Jeff, we really need to get you a vice. So I will, I will carry this bag of all my stuff, right? There's no vice in there. I'm, I'm going to have that up at the Hobie Bass Open Series Awards Ceremony. Right now, my buddy Jake, he's in third place on day two. He's got some fish to cull. I think he had a 13 and three quarter incher. He was mad at himself yesterday for leaving a 16 and a half incher in his total. I'm like, dude, you're doing good. I think he had like three of them, 19 or better. He knows that river. He'll end up in the money. All right, so I'm just wrapping that around. But no, I, I mean, I will, I'll probably get there early. I'll bring that bag. I actually bring that bag to <laughs> when I travel. I'll be going up to Chicago later this, uh, this week. 
I'm gonna leave these long. And I'll be in a hotel room somewhere in North Illinois, just um, tying more jig heads. I'll bring these and have time to do it. All right, so I got, this is my antenna. You know, this is gonna, this round rubber is gonna rise up above everything else. It's gonna say, hey, Largy, over here. Come here, come here. I got something for you. So I do one, one kind of short end there, and then I leave the long end hanging up. I mean, just, it, it, the round rubber is, is buoyant. It, it sticks up. It absolutely jumps up and says, yep, this is what you want over here. All right, that slid. Let me show you my mistake. That slid on the wrong side of the collar. And I'm, and I'm taking the, the skirt, the silicone that, that is doing this now, because it, it rounded the, it was like this. I want it like this. So it kind of, the thread's rounded and now it's all just pointing it back. No good. So let me back it off. Let me start over again with the, the round rubber. Can you see that? Maybe not. There. So this, that's on the inside turn of the, so the head comes down and then there's the bump. You want it in the notch. That way it all flares out. If it doesn't do that, you don't have quite the, the profile you need. And that round rubber as I was talking more than paying attention did the wrong thing. All right, now we're in the right little notch. And I'll put a little bit of, I'm, I'm just tugging it over. I'm tugging it to be straight because I want it lifting up. The, the palmetto bug is gonna be down here, but the round rubber's above it. It'll lift up and, and have its own freedom to flop around and wave down a big largey. I really feel like that's what this is setting up to be, is, is these are my hooks for catching the largies. I'll stay with the original for the smallmouth because I, I use smaller baits there. But the new Magnum, or at least the hooks for it. I mean, I'll put, and I, and I did some, this is actually the size one aught or two aught, I forget. I think it's the one aught <clears throat> in the original. Um, so it's 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 slightly bigger than than the original hook, but I put it in the original mold. I think that one's going to be good for you know slower rate of fall, bigger bait, and with that much. Elaztec, it is a, you know, it is going to work. All right, so I've done a couple half hitches. I'm going to put that down, open my, my, my head cement, and do something awful here. <laughs> I'm totally not using that the right way. But whatever, I'm just, I'm getting it done. Getting some of this squished around on those threads to lock them in that's it that's not totally it but I'll trim that I'll trim that look how that just flared out trim that yeah and then we got this loop big old loop It. I'm gonna free them to jump around a little bit and then the round rubber. How many strands did you do, Jeff? I think there are four here. I do like to give them different lengths sometimes. Maybe 
leave two long, two somewhere in between. Just gives them a little bit of different, different, different space that they take up if they're different lengths. But um, okay, now moment of truth. How's this gonna lay here with the palmetto bugs? Bugs, buggy bug. Bug is a weird name for craw. It's very southern. It is sort of bug meat. I know, I know that I've heard with regard to crustaceans and crabs in particular, people in Louisiana talking about like, y'all can have our crabs up there in Maryland. We don't want that bug meat. We got shrimp. <laughs> yeah. We like our crabs up here in Maryland, but can't argue with them on a shrimp. Alright, but yeah, crustacean, bug, they're kind of close. That's it. That is what I'm doing with the new Midwest Finesse Magnum. Yeah. I think I'm going to do some in lighter, lighter weights, bigger hooks, tight a large mouth. Anyhow, hope that helps. Hope it uh, inspires some of you to uh, to get into tackle crafting. Do some, uh, you know, just get creative. You got ideas, and and when you have an idea, it's it's yours, and you're going to be the only one that'll have that bait. Talk to Tim Isaacs getting ready for the uh, Hobie BOS, and he um, <clears throat> I I did a Instagram reel with um, <clears throat> asking everyone, okay, what's the lure that you're going to win this tournament on? And he talked about a bait he made himself. He's like, no one else has it. It was my own creation. And uh, man, when you make something yourself, that gives you like so much more confidence because you, you had an idea and your idea was right and they're going to eat it. The green one with the uh, Z-Man Helicross and green pumpkin. So you don't have to gather a whole lot of the Z-Man, the Elaztec. In fact, it's better if you just get a little bit. And uh, it lays on there real nice. 